Welcome to Linda Faith Speak Encourage Yourself Radio Show. It's time to discover you. I'm bringing awareness to what God has for you and how you can walk out any issue in your life. Each week, I will introduce you to a life filled with purpose and how that purpose is being used to glorify God, prescribing tips, tools, and resources on how you can encourage yourself. So now, let's walk by faith and not by sight. Enjoy. Good evening, everyone. My name is Chandra Nicole Gore, and I am a lens of faith. Today on the show, it's just me. Today, I am going to take you through two short stories of how people encourage themselves. So what I want to um, actually get you all to take a look at right off the bat is just knowing that you can encourage yourself through any situation or circumstance. I'm not telling you something that I don't know, but I'm actually telling you something that I actually have done. It is hard when you look at the negative of the situation, but when you think about God's promise and his ability to be faithful to us, no matter what the situation is, he will definitely walk through it with you. Just as he said in Psalms 23, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. We must know that to be the God's honest truth because he wrote it. He said it. And I want you all just to understand that life happens to us all. I say that on almost every show that I'm on. Life happens to us all. But we must know that God is on the throne and he created us in his image and his likeness. So we must know that God will get us through it. We must know that God will get us through it. Today, I was reading something. I've been reading uh, quite a bit lately, and uh, I want to share it with you all. I want to share this short story that I encountered on today. Um, It's by a man named David McCaslin. He wrote this. Uh, It's a short story. And I want to share it with you. He said, on a beautiful sunny day, I was walking in a park and feeling very weary in spirit. It wasn't just one thing weighing me down. It seemed to be everything. When I stopped to sit on a bench, I noticed a small plaque placed there in loving memory of a devoted husband, father, brother, and friend. Also on the plaque were these words, but they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. He saw those words on a plaque, right? He says, those words came to me as a personal touch from the Lord. Weariness, whether physical, emotional, or spiritual comes to us all. Isaiah reminds us that although we become tired, although we become tired, the Lord, the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth will not grow tired or weary. How easily I have forgotten that in every situation, the Lord gives us strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. What's it like on your journey today? If fatigue has caused you to forget God's presence and power, why not pause and recall his promise? Those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength here, now, right where we are. When I read those words, I thought about my very own journey. What does your journey look like? Do you grow weary and tired of the things that you face day to day? The upward hills that you have to climb, the mountains that are right in front of you and seem like they're not going to move. Maybe it's the loss of a job. Maybe it's the loss of a family member. Maybe it's the fact you only have three dollars in your bank account. But yet and still you have seven bills that need to be paid. One is the light bill. One is the gas bill. 
One is the rent or the mortgage. One is the water bill. One is the trash bill. One is your cell phone bill. When we think about all the bills that we have, the life changing effects of society that, that they may have on us. We think about all those things and we become fearful. We become tired. We become weary. We become saddened. We become all these things and we forget in that moment of feeling those things that God made a promise to us that he will be with us, that he will never leave us, that he will never forsake us, that he is an ever present help in a time of trouble. We must always remember that when we encourage ourselves. We can do this. We can do this ourselves without somebody else pushing us, without somebody else helping us, without somebody else affirming us, without somebody else validating us. It feels good to have those things happen to you, though, because we all want love. We all want affirmation. We all want care. We all want it. But there are some things that God has promised us. And he will deliver. He has never, ever said something that was not to be true. I want to take you on a small journey of how I started encouraging myself. I spent three years in Augusta, Georgia. For those of you that don't know my story, three years I was stationed in Augusta, Georgia as a soldier. And I cried out to the Lord daily. Why did you place me here alone? Why is my family in Tampa and I'm here? Why do I have to do this? Why, why, why? All these questions I was rustling and tussling with causing myself more uh, stress, more anxiety, more pain, more anger, more sadness, just crying, crying, crying. And I learned something. I started to meditate. I started meditating and I started doing that just based on the Lord's word. I opened up my Bible one day and I started with Psalms and I started reading, just trying to learn scripture, trying to get closer and closer to the Lord in the time of trouble, in a time of sadness, in a time of sorrow, in my time of crying out to the Lord, asking why, why me, oh God, why? So he placed upon my heart meditation. So as I started to meditate, I only could sit for, I don't know, maybe two seconds, three seconds at first. Not very long. It was very short when I first started because my mind was telling me, look at your cell phone, look out the window, scratch your nose, scratch your ear, scratch your toe. My mind was telling me to do all these things except be still. The power of meditation taught me how to be still and know that God was with me, that I can develop an inner sense of calmness, an inner sense of mindfulness, an inner sense of just being still, knowing that God is in control of my life. Please share the broadcast out if you are joining me on the live and welcome to you. Uh, for joining me on the live today. I am alone. I'm not interviewing anybody. It's just me just talking about how I encourage myself. Basically, I just shared one short story already about encouraging yourself. This man was walking, decided to sit down on the beach, sit down on a bench. And he started thinking about all the things that were happening to him. We do that. We do that. We do that while we're driving, while we're sitting, while we're studying. We do it from time to time. Every single day, there's someone that wants to end it because they can't take the pressures of life. They can't take all the things that are happening at one time. I guarantee you, God can help you through it. I guarantee you. He built us 
for such a time as this. It's all depending on if you trust God or not. Do you trust God? Do you trust God? I'm going to say it one more time. Do you trust God? So going back to meditation, I thought about it and I started doing it. I started trying to practice it on my own. See, when we pay attention to our own breath, we're learning how to return to it, how to remain in it, how to be present in the moment right then and there. It's it's basically like dropping an anchor, like a boat drops an anchor down into the water, anchoring yourself right where you are. That boat cannot move once you drop the anchor. That boat is sitting still, right? The boat is sitting still and it's not moving. That's how it is when you learn how to meditate. It's like you drop an anchor and you just be still and know that God is right there. God is right with you. God would never leave you. God's rod and staff is there to comfort you. You're there. You're there. You're there. You're not moving. Today, I did a meditation session with one of my sisters. And there was this force that came over me. And I know it was the Holy Spirit came over me as I closed my eyes and I sat back in my seat and I was just listening to the water. And it was the most powerful calmness that I felt in quite some time, just knowing that I was paying attention to every breath that I made. I even heard my heart beating. I could hear it. I could feel it. I could sense it just by being still knowing that i was okay in the moment of shutting everything else down all the chaos all the confusion all the rustling all the tussling all the thoughts of paying bills all the thoughts of someone needing something all the thoughts of my feet hurting all the thoughts of my arm aching all the thoughts of my back and neck pain diminished in that very moment. It diminished because I focused my energy on the here and now of being mindful right where I was at, listening to every breath, slowly breathing and understanding that I was present right in my seat as I'm sitting right now. We have the ability to know and understand what it is that we're doing at the present time. And that's how we gain um, access to our own thoughts and progress of encouraging ourselves and doing what it is that we're doing right this minute. So when you know that that thought is there, When you know that your mind is chaotic, try deep breathing. Try pausing right where you are. Breathing. Deep breaths in and out, in and out. Slowly becoming conscious and aware of where you are and that you're okay. As long as you have breath in your body, you are okay. We have to learn to look at the positive in our situations. Although I sat here, I did deep breathing. I realized where I was at. I realized what I was going through, but I didn't focus on it. I did not focus on the negative, but I focused on just deep breathing. The inhale. and the exhale. We have to learn to quiet our minds, becoming conscious of our surroundings, the quiet space that is available to us if we just be still and know that God is with us. In mindfulness practice, you learn how to return to. 
how to remain in and be present right where you are. Just like I talked about dropping the anchor on a boat. We anchor ourselves in the here and now and learn to know and discover our purpose without judging ourselves because you're only focused on right where you sit at, right where you're deep breathing at. You're focused on that and nothing else. The idea behind mindfulness is very, very simple. It takes practice and patience. It takes practice and patience. I didn't learn how to meditate for an hour overnight. It took me months of practicing how to be still, block out the chaos, and just rest right where I'm at. You can do that. You have the ability to learn to meditate, quiet your mind, and become conscious of your breathing, conscious of your heartbeat, conscious of sitting still, knowing, knowing that every breath you take is a blessing from God. Meditation isn't a cure-all, be-all, or it doesn't heal you from any sickness or, or disease. It alleviates things, though. It allows you to be comfortable in sitting still. It allows you to focus on your breathing. It allows you to focus your breath for however long you set the time for. It allows you to become conscious of your breathing. That's very detrimental, especially when you suffer from anxiety, fear, stress, anger. You want to channel your energy in something more positive to quiet your inner space. We all need space in life and meditation gives you that space from the chaos. Sometimes that's all we need to make better choices for ourselves, for our families, and for our communities. The most important thing you can do to bring with you to the table is your meditation practice and practice of being patient, kind to yourself, and comfortable in where you're sitting. The basics of meditation is just, one, finding a comfortable place to be, a comfortable place to sit for five minutes, two minutes, try two minutes. Focus on your breathing and follow your breath for two minutes at the bare minimum. I want you all to learn how to do meditation in order to become aware of yourself. And in that awareness, you'll learn how to comfort yourself and you'll learn how to encourage yourself. We all can do it. I guarantee you, we all can do it. We all can do it. We all can practice mindfulness. I'm going to tell you something else I used to do. I used to take a walk. And every once in a while, I would stop at maybe a flower and just admire that flower. I would look at how many leaves were on the flower, if it had seeds in the middle of it, if I could blow on it and it would fly everywhere, kind of like a sunflower. I would analyze the flowers. Guess what? As I analyzed those flowers, I was not thinking about any care in the world. I wasn't thinking about any bills. I wasn't thinking about the stresses of life. I wasn't thinking about getting a job. I wasn't thinking about taking my children anywhere. I wasn't thinking about how much money I had in my bank account. I wasn't thinking about any of those things. Those are distractions that distract you from staying positive. We have to learn how to be mindful. And in your mindfulness, you can encourage yourself. I'm not telling you something I have never done. I'm telling you something that I've done for the last three years of my life. And it's quite effective, quite effective learning how to be still and just praise and worship and understand who you really are. Discovering yourself. When you discover yourself, it turns on a light that you may never have seen before. Because you discover what makes you tick? What makes you happy? 
What makes you smile? What makes you do the things that God has gifted you to do? Be encouraged to encourage another. But first, you must encourage yourself. As I talked about the strength for the weary in the first story that I read, I want to talk about Isaiah 40 and 27, which reads, those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. How do you renew your strength? Through day-to-day life challenges, how do you renew your strength? Or do you just go through the day mad all the time because nothing seems to be going your way? Well, let me tell you how I renew my strength. I pull out my Bible or I pull out books and I read. I pull out inspirational, like I have this book right here sitting in my lap. I pull out inspirational pieces that I can learn from, that I can grow from, and basically just change the dynamics of my thinking at the present time. Because the mind is a terrible thing to waste. If if we constantly meditate on negativity, you'll be dead. Because your mind is eventually going to tell you to take yourself out. I had that experience before too. But I sit here right here before you right now today because I did not allow the negative to take me out. Being mindful, meditating on the word day and night. Psalms 33, 8 through 9 says, let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him for he spoke and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. Well, my situation currently is uncertain. God knows that. I know that. I don't think I need to be reminded of that. But how am I going to encourage myself through that? The only control I have in the matter right now is how I choose to approach my situation. I choose to approach my situation by encouraging myself, number one, and staying positive, number two. That takes intentional efforts to encourage yourself and to stay positive. Will I stress and wring my hands and have the background noise of anxiety? Or will I turn to God's word and believe in his promise? Hey, Vanessa, thanks for joining the live with me, sis. What what is it that you will do? Will I stress and wring my hands and have the background noise of anxiety running through my head all day, even when I'm doing other things? Or will I stop, pause, ponder, and pray? Take a deep breath and acknowledge reality for what it is and then choose to trust God to show me the way through it. We must learn to trust God no matter what it looks like no matter what's happening in our life, no matter what is going on. It all sounds like it's easy, but it it takes intentional effort on your part. It took intentional effort on my part to learn how to do it. What are you allowing in your ear gates every day? I'm listening to various pastors throughout the day, starting at 6 30 a.m. with my own pastor, Jomo on the prayer line. I'm tuning in to Dr. Juanita Bynum. I'm tuning in to Dr. T.D. Jakes. I'm tuning in to uh, various shows that encourage me, inspire me, motivate me. Throughout my timeline, there's positivity being poured out from other positive people that's pouring out into the world. And I'm reading those positive messages. We must choose to do better for ourselves. We must choose a way of light and not of darkness. God, help me to run ahead with presumptions, but to wait and proceed as you clear a path for for my feet. God will clear the path for you. He takes us through different seasons of our life on purpose because he's trying to show us something. He's trying to teach us something. He's trying to tell us something without screaming through a bullhorn, Chandra. 
I need you to do X, Y, and Z. God intentionally takes us through situations and circumstances to scream out to us like a person with a bullhorn so that we can shape up and do the right thing, go down the right path and learn what it is that God is trying to teach us. And through those very things, we can encourage ourselves and we can encourage others. Because as we go through tumultuous seasons, there's a lesson that's being taught. What is that lesson? Did you get the lesson? Or are you going to repeat the cycle? Oftentimes people repeat the cycles because they didn't learn the lesson. We're learning the lesson. You can encourage yourself never to do it again. When you get the lesson from the season that you are in, you can encourage yourself never to do it again. There is nothing more needful to our whole being than our daily solitude with God and his word. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Mark eleven twenty four. We have to believe in order to receive. How does that work? Well, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray to be anxiety free. In Jesus' almighty name, I pray. I believe that I can rid myself of anxiety. I'm going to say that to myself daily. I believe that I can rid myself of anxiety. I believe that I can rid myself of anxiety. That's on a post-it note. A part of my affirmations. To affirm my day. To meditate on the word night and day. That's how I encourage myself. How do you go about encouraging yourself? There are many ways that we can accomplish this. Number one, I encourage you to get around positive people. Positive people. Positive hearing. Scriptures. Bible verses. Gospel channels. Podcasts that's positive. When you're driving in your car. It doesn't necessarily have to be a physical person, but whatever it is that you're allowing into your ear gates matters because we focus on our most dominant thought. So what are you thinking about? I guarantee you, if you listen to a song that says I'm going to kill people every day, you might end up doing it because that's what's in your ear gate every single day, 365 days a year. You listening to that play in your ear. But if you listen to, I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you that I love you more and more each day. If I listen to that every day, I'm going to tell, talk to Jesus. I'm going to say, I love you, Jesus, because I do love Jesus. And it, guess what? If you listen to that every day, you're going to love Jesus, too. It's all about what we're listening to, what we're hearing, what we're allowing in our ear gates. What are you speaking over yourself? Because we have to learn to encourage ourselves, we must know that the words that come out of our mouth have to be positive. I shall live and not die. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am more than a conqueror. I am a warrior. What are you saying over yourself every day? Think about that. Thank you all who have joined me on the live line tonight. This is the Encourage Yourself series with Lens of Faith. Today I'm rolling solo. Just here to encourage you, uplift you, and motivate you with two short stories, one of which I've already told, um, based on our Daily Bread pamphlet that I read today. Um, you can connect with me at any point in time, www.lensoffaith.org. I am here as your motivational coach, coach to serve you, leadership strategist, and destiny catalyst. I am also a ghostwriter 
here to serve you and your writing needs. You can connect with me at any point in time using www.lensoffaith.org. I'm putting it in the comments for those that catch the replay. Please hashtag replay and let me know that you joined the live line today. Um, just talking about encouraging yourself. There's so much going on in the world today. Right now, there's a huge hurricane brewing in the Atlantic called Hurricane Dorian that have just obliterated the island of the Bahamas. And uh, my niece just left Freeport, Bahamas uh, a couple of days ago. And to God be the glory, she is safely back at home in Chicago and uh, not in harm's way. Uh, we must pray for the people in the Bahamas and uh, lift them up in prayer because they need every prayer right now. Uh, as Hurricane Dorian spins toward the Florida coastline, uh, we're staying prayerful for all the cities along the coast of Florida on the East Coast and up to South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia area. Uh, please keep those people in your prayers. And um, if there's anything that you can do to serve, to help, by all means, do just that. I want to take you to my next story, which comes out of 1 Samuel 30, which talks about David and how David destroys the Amicalites, kites. Uh, just reading the scripture real quick. David and his men reached Ziklag on the third day. Now the Amicalites, Amalite Kalites had raided the Negev and Ziklag. They had attacked Ziklag and burned it and had taken captive the women and everyone else in it, both young and old. They killed none of them, but carried them off as they went on their way. When David and his men reached Ziklag, they found it destroyed by fire and their wives and sons and daughters had been taken captive. So David and his men wept aloud until they had no strength left in them to weep. David's two wives have been captured. Jezreel and Abigail, the widow of Nabal of Carmel. David was greatly distressed. I'm going to say that again. This is 1 Samuel 30 and 6. David was greatly distressed. How many of you all have been greatly distressed before? Greatly distressed because the men were talking of stoning him. Each one was bitter in spirit because of their sons and daughters were taken. But David found strength in the Lord. His God. David. David found strength in the Lord. These men were talking about stoning him to death. Killing him. Ultimately because they placed him at fault for their family being taken captive. David turned to the Lord and said, you know, Lord, should I overtake them? Should I pursue them for taking my, my, the families away? And God says, pursue them. You will certainly overtake them and succeed in the rescue. David and the 600 men with him came to Bessor Valley where some stayed behind. 200 of them were too exhausted to cross the valley, but David and the other 400 continued the pursuit. They found an Egyptian in the field and brought him to David. They gave him water to drink and food to eat, part of the cake of pressed figs and two cakes of raisins. He ate and was revived, for he had not eaten any food or drunk any water for three days and three nights. David asked him, who do you belong to? Where do you come from? He said, I am an Egyptian, the slave of an Amalekite. My master abandoned me when I became ill three days ago. We raided the Negev of the Carinthites, some territory belonging to Judah and the Negev of Caleb, and we burned Ziklag. David asked him, can you lead me down to this raiding party? He answered, swear to me before God that you would not kill me or hand me over to my master and I will take you down to them. He led David down and there they were scattered over the countryside, eating, drinking, reveling because of the great amount of plunder they had taken from the land of the Philistines and from Judah. David fought them, 
from dusk until the evening of the next day, and none of them got away. Except 400 young men rode off on camels and fled. David recovered everything the Amalekites had taken, including his two wives. David encouraged himself in the Lord. I'm going to say that again. David encouraged himself in the Lord. These people were talking about stoning him to death, and he turned to the Lord. So I say to you all today, if only we could always remember as quickly as David turned to the Lord immediately when something went wrong. We must do the same thing in times of distress, in times of delusionment, disillusionment, in times of turmoil, anxiety, depression, fear, whatever it is. We must turn to God. God has made us some awesome promises of his love, of his care, of his kindness for us. If only we will stop and remind ourselves that he is really here with us and he's ready. He's really ready, willing, and able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we can ask or think, but we have to turn to him. We won't know what it is that God can do if we continue to do things in our own strength. I tried to do things in my own strength for many years. And it was hard. And I failed. Sometimes it just didn't go right. Sometimes I wanted to throw the towel in. Sometimes I wanted to give up. Sometimes I just got flustered and bothered and angry. But only if I would have turned to the Lord, like I know now. God has a way of forcing us to turn to him. Things can get so bad that you have no other choice but to turn to God. But if we just try God first, if we love the Lord and we're trying to live for him, we can encourage ourselves in his promise that he gave us to take even the bad things and turn the good things around. For our good, for all things work together for the good. We must remind ourselves of that. We can encourage ourselves just by telling ourselves that all things work together for our good. Say it with me. All things work together for our good. He's promised to take care of us. He's our provider, our helper, our friend, our keeper. He's a way maker. An encourager, a light in the darkness. He's an ever-present help in a time of trouble. And we must learn to encourage ourselves in the Lord by knowing that very fact. Let's take time to thank God and say, hallelujah, oh God. I thank you, Father, for being present with me right now today. I thank you, Father God, for being the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end, Father God. I thank you for breathing life into me. I thank you, Father. Thank you, Father God, for being who you are, being my father, the head and not the tail. We must remain faithful to God's promises in our life, his dedication, his love, his kindness. He said we will be all right. He said that all we had to do was trust him. Do you trust God? Do you trust God? When no one gets in line to tell you what a great job you have done, when no one seems to agree with your decision to obey God, when no one pats you on the back, when no one gives you a high five, can you just say, Lord, have your way? Father God, I know you're there. I know that you're walking with me. I know that you're there for me. I know that you will never leave me or forsake me. I know that I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. Say that. Say that. When those you have loved and worked for leave you, taking their support with them, 
encourage yourself in the Lord. When your family misunderstands you and your friends betray you, encourage yourself in the Lord. When those who have been your comrades in a battle and you come home and they act like they don't know you, encourage yourself in the Lord. Go back over your life and think about all the times God was there for you. Go back and recall all those times. Remember some of the awards or trophies you have obtained in life. When you ran those races and you came in first place. When you stood up in front of the crowd of people and saved a life. Get out the thank you letters that people have wrote you. The birthday cards people have given you. The letters you've received. Maybe you've been locked up for a while and people wrote you. Get those letters out and read over them one more time. Read over the testimonies of what God has done through your life. Read back over the things you wrote yourself, the notes you've taken in your journal. Remember those things for God is a God back then and he's the same God right now. Encourage yourself through all those memories. Remember that God created you in his image and his likeness. And he made you for such a time as this. Remember your calling and your mission from God. If you don't know what that is, seek out the Lord. Say, Lord, show me what I'm here for, oh God. This very message will empower you with purpose and perseverance to know and unlock your full potential and discover yourself within the Lord. Where God guides you, he provides for you. He does not give you a vision without a provision. If he showed it to you, he's going to show you how to do it. Rekindle your passion and intimacy with the Lord, with God. Develop a relationship by meditating on his word night and day. Get your Bible out and read from the beginning to the end. Try one scripture at a time. This is how you develop a relationship with Jesus and the Holy Spirit and bring, bring a renewance of the sense of significance to your life. God loves you. He made you on purpose. He gave each and every one of us a special gift to be able to help someone else, to bless someone else, to encourage someone else. But first, you must learn to love yourself and encourage yourself. God is not against you. He's for you. When he is for you, no one else can come against you. You are God's prized possession. Know that. Tell yourself that. I am God's prized possession and he made me for such a time as this. Reward yourself by taking some time out and enjoy life. Take a walk. Drive around the park. Sit with yourself to know yourself. Thank yourself. Pat your own self on the back. Rest in the Lord's goodness and grace and know that his mercy is sufficient enough for your life. Reaffirm your goals. Look back over your goals. The vision that God gave you. It's for you to realize that the suffering you have endured is worth achieving every single goal God gave you. You might find that some goals aren't worthwhile, that, that you can really discard them from your list. Maybe you've reached your goals and you can cross them off the list. But most importantly, don't give up on yourself. Constantly encourage yourself. Reaffirm your goals. Reaffirm your dreams. Write everyone down. Every dream and every goal, write it down. Just as Habakkuk 2 2 tells us, write the vision, make it plain. You got to write it down. You have to write it down. See things from God's viewpoint. Until you get God's perspective on your life, you will always be overwhelmed with the impossible things that will come up against you. Rejuvenate yourself with a fresh outlook from, from God's perspective. How is God looking at it? 
Well, open up your Bible and take a look. Open up your Bible and take a look at God's perspective. God loves you. Everything you're going through is for a purpose, to grow you, for you to learn, for you to encourage yourself, for you to encourage another person. Nothing happens, just happens. Everything is on purpose. We must learn how to be the salt and the light. Encouragement. Just as David encouraged himself, just as uh, this guy from the first story that I read encouraged himself. Strength for the weary. David McCaslin, the story that I told about him walking. He said, on a beautiful sunny day, I was walking in a park and feeling very weary in spirit. It wasn't just one thing weighing me down. It seemed to be everything. What is your everything that's bothering you? Turn it over to the Lord. Remember 1 Samuel 30, 1 through 6. Remember. How David encouraged himself in the Lord. He turned quickly to the Lord. He turned quickly to the Lord. We must learn how to turn quickly to the Lord and encourage ourselves through any circumstance, condition, adversity, trial, or tribulation that comes up against us because the devil wants to take you out. He starts with your mind, your body, your soul. He wants it. Don't let him get it. Learn to reclaim your life and encourage yourself in the Lord just as David did. Meditate, pray, be intentional about your prayer. Target areas you want to hit home. Don't take kindly. Don't take kindly to the threat of the, the enemy against your life. Be intentional about combating it. Be intentional about encouraging yourself at all costs. Learn how to speak life over yourself. I shall live and I shall not die. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. God is the ever-present help in a time of trouble. He will never leave me. He'll never forsake me. Although David was greatly distressed, we as humans become greatly distressed when we don't know what to do. But quickly, I say to you, turn to the Lord. Pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Father, I know you see what's happening in my life right now, oh God. Father God, I'm asking you to remove this mountain of anxiety. Remove this mountain of fear. Remove this mountain of turmoil. Move this tribulation, oh God, from my way. Make a path clear for me, oh God, to walk towards your loving kindness. Guide me, oh God, down the pathway of righteousness for your name's sake. Father, I know that you said you will prepare a table in the presence of my enemies. So I ask you, Father God, to prepare that table for me right now in the presence of my enemies, Father God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may fall down. We all fall, but it's how you get back up. How long will you stay down? I encourage you to get up. Walk it out. Walk by faith and not by sight. The devil's job is to take you out. You can prove him wrong by getting back up. Tread upon those serpents and scorpions and demons. You have all the power of the enemy. If you can walk over him, you have power over him. So we must learn to constantly keep ourselves encouraged. What are you listening to? Who are you surrounded by? And what are you speaking over yourself? I encourage you to speak positivity over yourself. Speak good thoughts, positive thoughts. And as I I prepare to end this broadcast, I want to leave you all with some words 
of encouragement. I want you all to learn how to uh, make I statements. I statements are, are, are very powerful. And it's, it's very powerful for your encouragement to be able to encourage yourself in the Lord. And affirmations as well. In order for you to walk your daily life out, you must speak to yourself. I am love. I am purposeful. I don't sweat the small stuff. I can do it. I can do it. I am my own superhero. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I am in control of my destiny. I have the power to create change. What are your I statements? What are you speaking over yourself? What are you speaking to others? And most importantly, what is being spoken to you? I pray that this live broadcast tonight, Encourage Yourself series, has been a blessing to you all. You can reach me by simply contacting me for a free consultation, www.lensoffaith.org. I put it in the comments, or you can just travel there, meet me. Um, I'm here as your motivational coach, leadership strategist, ghostwriter, destiny catalyst, here to serve. I love serving people. I love inspiring, encouraging, and motivating. It's so much easier for me to help someone else. But when it's time for me to do it myself, it was a struggle for me. And I needed help. I got that help. And I'm so glad about it. I want you all to know that help is available to you. No matter what situation you face in life, help is always available. Reach out. Reach out reach out, reach out. I am Chandra Nicole Gore and I am a lens of faith. Thank you all for joining me tonight. And just know that Thursday night at eight with lens of faith is returning September 19th, 2019. Be a blessing to someone encourage someone right now there's an entire uh, country going through a state of panic pray for the island of bahamas pray pray for the mainland florida east coast south carolina north carolina virginia area i ask you all to continue to keep us all in your prayers. God bless you all and have a great night.